Hi guys, welcome back to Art by Jennifer. So this week we're doing a tree ring pour. We're gonna do a tree ring pour on my 18 by 24 canvas. Also this week, I'm actually gonna be talking you through exactly what I do as opposed to my previous videos where I sort of just tell you about what I'm gonna do and then I do it and you get to see it sped up. This week, I'm actually gonna talk you through exactly what we're doing step by step. So I'll be priming my canvas with you and telling you everything. For those of you that are new viewers, welcome to the channel. If you'd like to, please, 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 please like and subscribe to our channel. If you love my content, I would love to know that you do and be able to put out more content for you. Once again, welcome to our channel. So guys, like I said, we're gonna do a 18 by 24 canvas tree ring pour. And what I'm gonna start with is the base coat or your negative space. And my negative space is simply, um, I use white artist lofts flow paint as well as uh, flood flow troll to help it move. You don't have to use this. I'm using it because I feel that it helps my paint you know, slide around on the canvas a little bit easier. Also, the colors that I'm using today are Folk Art uh, Blue Topaz, and it's a metallic, and I have Folk Art Eggplant, and it's a multi-surface, so this one's not metallic. It's like a purpley color. I have Native Turquoise, which is another metallic. Ceramicote, um, what is this, Navy Blue, and Ceramicote Butternut Yellow. So those are the colors that I'll be using today, also with white and black. So, without any further ado, I'm gonna get started with putting down my base coat. Um, you don't really need a whole, whole lot of this. I personally put it down just to, like I said, help my paint move and make sure I get it to the edges and stuff like that. You can use a tool for it. Today, I'm not gonna use a tool, I'm just gonna use my fingers. I feel like it'll help it move a little bit quicker. So you just, like I said, just get it all over the canvas itself. Make sure you get your edges and the sides. It's no biggie if it's not level, it will level out later. You just wanna make sure that you have paint all over your canvas. So after you feel like you have it sufficiently covered, I go ahead and torch the bubbles that are in the top part of this canvas just to you know get the bubbles out of it all right so what we're using to mix the paint today i'm actually just going to use two regular like little cups because i'm going to have it so that it goes straight in the center and i'll do two of them from there remember when you're pouring your paint into your cup you have to know that the first color that you put into your cup is going to be the last color that comes out so I'm going to start with white because I want my white to be more so towards the end of it. And I may layer a few drops of it in there later on. But you just put some white at the bottom of the cup. And I put some white at the bottom of this cup here. Not too, too much, but in my opinion, just enough. And then I'm going to start with my navy blue. And you can do it the same in both cups, or you can do it differently in both cups. It's completely up to you. And then I'll do this metallic uh, blue color that I have. And we'll do the same on this side here. Don't worry about what the cup looks like on the outside because the cup on the outside, like right now, it just looks like it's blue and white in it, but the outside of the cup is really, really deceiving. Then I'm gonna go in with this eggplant color. Then I'm gonna go in with my uh, yellow, my butternut yellow. Then I'm gonna take this black 
and put it over my butternut yellow. And then I'm gonna go in with this green metallic. Right on top. I think I might add a little bit more of this blue, this navy blue, and this uh, eggplant purple right at the edge here. Now the key when pouring your tree ring pour is to make, you can do it one of two ways really. Um, well, two ways that I know of personally. And this is just from my experience with doing it and watching other people on YouTube do it. Um, you can either just pour it straight into the center or you can make small circles when you're pouring it. I personally am a small circle fan, so I'm going to do the small circles. All right, so like I said, I'm going to start with this one. So I'm feeling like I'm about centered. And you really don't have to worry about how it starts per se. Like I can start, you start slow. The slower you pour, the better your rings will be. The faster you pour, eh, this is just personal preference, I guess. But as you can see, start the production of those little teeny tiny rings. And as you go, you'll get more and more of your color out of the cup. Like I've got that purple and that green going. And I'm finding my way into this black color. To that other cup that I said I wanted to use. Not drip. Oh, should I drip anyway? All right. And then we go right back in where we were. I love the way these rings look already. This yellow and black and green and blue into this white. It's so pretty. But again, you just start off real easy. So I'm going to move it in a slow circular motion, but we'll see what happens. I like this little thing here. It looks sort of like a little eye in the middle of it. All right, here we go. So we'll start. And it's not the most, I will say it's a little time consuming to do it, but it's rewarding in my opinion. So I just take my time. Cause like I said, I want to keep as much of this circle as possible, or as many of the rings as possible. But the way that you get it to move is just by moving. Take your time with it. Don't rush. Got all the time you need. All the time you need. You don't really want to lose 
use your center too much. So like I said, you're stretching it and just bringing it back. Trying to keep your center where it is. Letting it grow a little bit more. See if I can't get this corner while I'm over here. All right, all right. That is beautiful, guys. I love the rings that I have that are going around the center here. And this one part that was a little eye at first has just warped into something totally different. So now I just go around and check the sides of it to make sure that everything is what it should be. Okay, guys. So hopefully you liked today's video and it provided some instruction for you. If you liked today's video, make sure that you share, share, share the video with your friends and comment below. Let me know what you think, what I could do differently or what else you would like to see. Also, if you haven't subscribed, smash that subscribe button and I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.